Girl, this is a mess. Who child? This is why these folks can't find nobody. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hey, y'all. Welcome, Welcome back to my channel. I said, hey. Hey. Welcome back to my channel. Hey girl. Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Jasmine W. Hopefully the echo has gone down a little bit because I've moved my office to a different space in the casa. Um, I like this space a lot better. So hopefully the sound is a lot better in here too. It is. Since I'm not really in a confined room. Um, listen y'all, if you back at my channel every week and you haven't subscribed, I need you to know you a hater and that's okay, but I just need you to know. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> um, Y'all know what it is. This is my married at first sight reaction video. Is your shirt inside out? Let's get into it. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I don't have a lot of notes this week. Number one, because uh, baby, the furniture delivery pissed me off in the middle of the show and I missed like 30 minutes of it. Uh, first of all, and second of all, this episode wasn't about nothing. At all. At all. Anyway, <laughs> y'all know on my channel, what do we like to start with? The most... Boring couple. Boring couple, of course. Um, Let's get to it. Good job. <laughs> I watch too many TikTok videos. Anyway, um, let's start with Zach and Michaela. Um, Zach and Michaela were not together on the honeymoon, obviously, because we guessed it. Zach has COVID this episode. He said he'd been feeling bad for five days. Baby, why are you just telling us? Okay. If you got bit, would you tell? Anyway, Zach tested positive. Michaela tested negative. That's great. I know the producers are probably pressuring Michaela to say how she feels about the honeymoon but Michaela do you care about Zach's health at all she don't she only care about being married like people be dying from COVID do you not are you con concerned about his well-being at all or are you just concerned about you guys being married listen you have the rest of your life to spend together you have the rest of your life to take trips together if you guys even make it that far can this man get well okay healthy okay that's what I thought babe I, I know it sucks you're on your honeymoon and you guys want to have a good time but damn can he just breathe like literally can he breathe because covid is a respiratory uh virus <laughs> like come on anyway let him breathe child. let's move on to the next couple um where my pen damn that was short oh here we go i like to cross my little folks out when i'm done talking about them okay let's get to it the last thing i'll say about michaela though real quick is i don't know why michaela strikes me as she as a selfish person she is she says she's very um like protective like she don't like to share her man she's very protective um i get that but you, it's giving me selfishness because when you're not really concerned about that person's well-being first and you're talking about how it sucks to be in your honeymoon baby go by the pool okay relax go walk along the um marsh <laughs> since y'all ain't got no beach child anyway uh go go walk along the sea honey write journal meditate pray there are plenty of things you could be doing for you eat I pray love yeah. all that girl you ain't never took a trip by yourself anyway okay independent let's move on um the next couple that i have written down i guess for the um let's move on to bow and johnny okay they're boring too Bao and Johnny at the top of the episode talked about acceptance and how Johnny felt good about the fact that Bao was attracted to him and his body type. She said she likes slender guys. Um, I feel like they are both slender and they're both fine because who's fine with, like who's not fine with somebody being slender? That's why skinny people are not discriminated against because like, yeah, everybody's fine with you being slim. Like, that's no surprise. Unless you won't. But mm -hmm. um, Bao said that her crush that she gave the producers was Conan. O'Brien? Baby, listen, don't get, this, don't get me wrong. I love Conan O'Brien. I used to watch him every day in high school when the show came on, honey. Like, I used to watch him every day with my mama at 10 o'clock, right after uh, Jay Leno or right before, whenever they came on. But guess what? Conan ain't fine. And Conan, baby. He ugly. I'd rather have a carrot than Conan. Honey. A ice cream cone. Ba child, I'd rather I'd rather have a Coke. Cone head. Than Conan, child. Because Conan ain't going to switch. Ain't, Conan ain't going to quench your thirst like a cold Coca-Cola, child. <laughs> Conan. Anyway, let me move on. Um, I'd rather have a vanilla Coke. 
Johnny said Bow has a great ass. He could barely focus because of that ass. Could barely see around it. Okay. Okay. Um let's move on. I guess. Uh, Johnny surprised Bao with a picnic. He bought her a shirt that was too big for her and then took her to a picnic. She said that she'd never been on a picnic with somebody before. I missed this whole scene. My mama told me this. It sounded boring as hell, though. I don't think I missed anything. At all. Um, but at the end of the day, Bao looked like she really enjoyed the day. You know, she was cuddled up with Johnny in the bed. Johnny said, can uh, I get you to replace my body pillow? And she was like, yeah. And Johnny was literally ready to, uh, if you put it down right, like the way I want it. But uh, Bao brought up her insecurity when it comes to snoring and ruined the whole mood because she said that Johnny was making fun of her snoring. Now, I didn't hear nothing he said that made fun of her. He said, that's human. That's you. You sleep. What's the problem? Feel, feel You shouldn't feel bad about that. And she said, you can't make fun of me when I'm trying to tell you I'm feeling insecure about something. And she, she got a little upset. Low self-esteem. Honestly, I think that Bao's just looking for any reason to get Johnny out of the bed because she's so insecure about her snoring, but she won't say that. She wants to sleep separately. Remember when she suggested that they sleep separately in the beginning? And he was like, no, we're going to sleep together. And then she put the pillow in between them, hopefully to muffle her, uh, her snoring and hopefully to give him some space in the bed. And that didn't work. Now she's suggesting that, you know, if he can't, be sensitive towards her snoring then he might need to sleep in another bed she's just that insecure about it she said she stayed up uh at summer camp child and didn't go to sleep she was up taking no dose for for three months trying to keep the kids from knowing that she snored she's very insecure about it she needs to go to therapy she does it's not that serious about and it's probably connected to other things that you're insecure about okay why are you insecure about uh why are you insecure about that a, a snore it's not Child, okay. Um, listen, at the end of the day, Johnny said he don't care what's going down, like go going on with her nasal passageway. He trying to put his tongue somewhere, child. And bow. Baby, if you don't get it together and just let him. He'll put his tongue in her nose if she needs. <laughs> honey, if you don't get it together and let Johnny, uh, honey, uh, explore like you. Anyway. Okay, move on. Yeah, the only thing I will say is I guess if you tell your significant other, hey, there's something I really want to talk to you about. I've been feeling insecure about this like this particular thing my whole life. It's really not the time to joke, but I didn't hear any of the jokes. Like all he said was this this that's your body. I don't understand what the problem was, but anyway. Me either. Let's move on to um anybody else, child. Let's move on to the redhead and Ryan. Drink every time I say child. Go back. The redhead said all episode, honey, if you had a shot for every time she says she wants to have a serious conversation, I'm looking to have a serious conversation with Ryan today because everything we've been talking about has been real surface level. And I, baby, we get it. You want to have a serious conversation, but guess what? If you want to, if you want to get deep, be deep. You're a damn self and you're not. <laughs> Both of y'all looking like puddles to me at this point. Mm -hmm. You keep saying you want to have a serious conversation with Ryan. Well, baby, you're not saying anything serious. Let's get into it. Anyway, um, the, the first thing I wrote down is jokes are fun. Okay. I know Ryan's not funny, but to have a lighthearted conversation, what's the problem? Serious conversations are going to come up. Why not just to get to know each other as friends first? Whenever you're building a friendship with somebody, do you sit down and have serious conversations with them? No. No. Typically, you meet friends at work or at like out at events, and you're just having small talk, and you just get to know each other. And the fact that you know the serious conversations come over time with getting to know each other. You don't just sit down with a friend and meet them and say, well, tell me about, tell me about your tra traumatic childhood. Nobody does that. That comes with comfortability. The more comfortable you are with somebody, the more you're going to open up. And you guys aren't comfortable. It's been three days. 72 hours. And you're just, just searching for a serious conversation. I think it doesn't make sense. Looking for something to argue about. Um, I don't know why. I just don't think that the redhead and Ryan really click. It's, it kind of seemed like this episode they were trying to like show you that they're a good match at the end. But I just don't think they're a good match because... They're not a good match? I don't know. I just think they're both so boring. And I also think that Ryan is not emotionally healthy. But yeah. Um, I wrote down Ryan ain't deep. 
So Brett brought up the uh the conversation about kids. And when uh Ryan said he wanted kids and that was like the number one thing that he wanted, her face said she lit up, child. Okay, calm down, girl. Okay, you're about to literally just like break a blood vessel. You're about to just really just piss yourself at the fact that he wants to have kids. And so she started talking about kids and he said, yeah, he wants kids and all of this. And then he was like, let's change the subject. Let's talk about how we're going to get these kids and started talking about sex and how he is ready to like have an intimate relationship. I honestly think that Ryan just wants a vessel for children. Just a warm body. I think Brett could be like a cardboard box with like a red wig on top. And he would be like, yeah, so how can I get this box pregnant? Or a dolphin. I really just think he cares about like a mammal. I, I think he needs a, a, a like a blow up doll and some fresh eggs from a human or a little monkey or something. I don't know. He needs a vessel. I think I said this before in one of my reviews. He doesn't strike me as the person, the type of person. He doesn't strike me as a person who wants a relationship, a serious one, uh, a deep conversation. Um, he strikes me as the type of person who wants to procreate because he lost a friend and realizes that if he loses his life or he's not leaving much behind. And I think that some men have this like internal inclination that they need to pre reproduce in order to leave a legacy behind. And I think that's what he's running up against. He looks like he always wants to cry. He looks unhappy in life. He looks unsure about himself and his surroundings and the people around him. He looks like he just wants to procreate, not because He'll be a great father, not because he wants kids to nurture them and love them, but because he wants to leave something behind just in case he loses his life. Ooh, preach. And that could be a, 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 a real, like, I could be jumping off a cliff to conclusions, but something about me is just saying that about Ryan. I don't know. Right. What are you going to talk um, to the kids about? The redhead said that she clicked with Gil the most because he's pretty easygoing. I honestly think the redhead and Gil would have probably made a better couple because Gil is like, he asked these exploratory questions and the redhead loves to talk. She don't love to ask no deep questions, but she loves to have deep conversations, whatever that means. So Gil, he's ready to have like deep conversations. The redhead's more easygoing and stuff like that. Um, so they probably would have made a better couple to be honest. Yeah, I guess at the end, it really just showed us how badly Ryan wants children and he doesn't care about much else. I don't think he cares about Brett's personality. I don't think he cares about her income. I don't think he cares about her health. I think he cares about having kids. He said twins would be best. And I think he cares about, I think that also the fact that he wants to have kids so bad is connected to the fact that his parents aren't proud of him. Ooh. And they probably want grandchildren. And he's going to give them something that they can be proud of. Whoo, honey. You dropping gems. That's deep. But uh, Ryan ain't deep. He's about as deep as a uh, spit, honey. Anyway, <laughs> on the sidewalk. <laughs> uh, let's move on to... You funny. Just for just because I was talking about uh, the redhead and uh, Gil for, for uh, a moment. Let's move on to Gil and Mirla. Uh-oh, here she go. Now, let me address one of the comments that really annoyed me on my channel this week. Somebody said, because I said that I admired Gil for being able to move forward in, after dealing after having such a traumatic event at 14 years old, um, somebody came on my channel and said that they don't understand why everybody in the comments, including me, was, was, was caping for Gil because... He don't like black women and and he don't seem like the type of person that likes black women. And so why are we uh, feeling sorry for him? Y'all too. I'm sorry. Are you human or do you not feel sorry for people when you see that they lost their father at 14 and walked into the living room and saw their father shot in the head? Or not even feel sorry, just proud. What does Gil liking black women have to do with admiring his perseverance as a person and, his, and liking his personality? Nothing. Then the person went on to say that I probably don't care because I'm already married. Oh, got you. Just because I got hair, don't care. Don't mean I don't. Uh, I can't relate to bald head hoes. But take care <laughs> of your edges. Like anyway, I just want to let that person know that you're wrapped up in your insecurity um, uh, around your anger. You should probably go to therapy because you have a lot of anger towards black men that ain't done nothing to you. 
and uh, probably will never do nothing to you because Gil ain't done nothing to you, child. Gil, ha we don't even know who he's dated in the past. At all. Gil may have dated women from all types of background. I said, I think early in the one of my videos, that I think that Gil wanted a wife who was Latina and she could have been white or black or somewhere in between, Carmel, whatever the, the case. I think he wanted a wife who was Latina so he could speak Spanish to his kids and share that culture with his wife. I don't think it had anything to do with her being a white Latina or a black Latina. I could be wrong. And let me tell you, if I am, I don't care. At all. Because my father's married to a black woman. My brother was married to a black woman. I'm married to a black man who, who likes me, honey. I'm not feeling insecure about whether black men like black women. So one black man, even if he chose to never date black women, one black man not liking me is not a problem for me because I know there are plenty of black men that do. So let me move on because I had to get you together. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, I wrote down, I don't like regular milk either. At all. If I requested almond milk and they brought me regular milk, I'm calling down to the front desk. I said almond. I said oat, honey. I said soy. Anything. I did not say cows. Milk. And you're going to bring me my regular milk. I'm sorry. And I, I might, I can tell the difference between regular milk and almond milk. I don't, I don't have to get you to taste it. I can look at milk, pour it, and tell whether it's almond milk or regular milk. I mean, it, you, how you going to be a milk expert but can't tell between your milks? You need somebody else to taste it. Okay. Child, anyway, Marilla. Um, Is this breast milk or what? Second of all, listen, I don't like the honeymoon spot that they chose either. I think it's ugly. I think it's raggedy, and it is like a nursing home. In my opinion, I agree with Mirla. However, not liking something and complaining about something the entire time you are there are two different things. I will say, I don't like this. This is not my spot, but we're going to make the best of it because, child, this is a mess. And move on. Quickly. Okay, who wants to be around somebody who complains 24-7? Mirla, this is why she is single. She's hard to please. Mirla needs to be hot by her mere... Lonesome. I was trying to make a joke, but I couldn't think of one. She needs to be by herself. Alone. Okay? Mirla needs to be alone looking in the mirror. Because that, that's a hot ass... She needs to be alone. Mirror. Because she's not fun. She's not even fun. I can't imagine her being fun to be around, and she ain't fun to watch on TV either, actually. Not even as a friend, honestly. I wrote down, being happy is a choice. I don't think that Mirla suffers from clinical depression, okay? And if you don't, you have to wake up and choose to be happy about where you are. Mirla wakes up and chooses to be mad that she didn't get a honeymoon on the beach, and I don't like it, okay? You have a, you have a man here who's, who's pretty handsome, really successful in his own right. Um, you guys have a lot in common, and you're on your honeymoon. You, d you decided to go through this process, and you waking up mad. Why? It's a choice. Sorry. Um, In this case, at least. I wrote down, Gil talks too much. Be quiet. When he was downstairs with the other couples, he was telling them all Mirla's business, talking about her and stuff. That's your problem, Gil. You talk too damn much. Close your mouth. Close your lips. Because when she sees that, oh, I guarantee you she's not going to be happy about it. I'm not. Close your legs to married men. I'm not saying anything. You know, Gil didn't lie. He just said they business. But when you marry, you're going to learn that you don't tell people your business. Keep your business to yourself as a married couple. Yeah, that's between y'all. Especially to these folks. I wrote down, why is Mirla working on the honeymoon right now? So if you mean to tell me if you had a beach right here, you would be working? Probably not. It's giving selfish. It's giving selfish and annoying, actually. If we had a beach right here and we were in a five-star resort in, uh, in uh, Turks and Caicos, would you be working right now? Absolutely. You probably wouldn't be. Or would you be? Because I'm really trying to figure it out. Maybe she would. Who knows? I thought it was really selfish to let Gil spend the whole day by himself. Because you want to work and you pouting about the, the, the two-star situation. Don't your job know you came on the show? Girl? I cannot stand mm. Mirla. I really can't stand Mirla. I, really, I, like, I don't know if I dislike anybody over the past couple seasons I've been watching as much as I dislike Mirla. She's just terrible. Wow. Um... She said she's not going to kiss Gil. She said she's gone on three dates with people before and not kissed them. Baby, you've been with him longer than three nights. Okay, go ahead. Open the mouth. <laughs> so why not kiss him? I don't think she likes Gil very much. I really don't. Because if he was like a, um, a, 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 a fine athlete or a fine 
you know, doctor or something that she was into, I bet you she'd be all over him. Or Bill Gates. Because guess what? Baby, what you're going to realize is you need Gil more than he needs your ass. Because <laughs> Gil ain't been in a relationship in six years, honey. He don't care. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing I don't get. And, and this is what I like for people to evaluate. There's a lot you don't get, but okay. Mirla says she's been on three dates with people before without kissing them. How has that worked out for you? It hasn't. How has your plans worked out for you when it comes to dating? You being conservative. They haven't. And now you finally have somebody who's excited about getting to know you, married to you, and you refuse to kiss them. Dookie. Dumpster. Trash. Basura. And you making excuses about it, and they don't even make sense, but okay. Um, I wrote down, Mirla is emotionally unavailable. She just is. She keeps saying, oh, I want us to have a good foundation. I want us to have a good foundation. Well, guess what? We're going to need a good foundation before I buy you anything. How about that? Okay. Mirla doesn't care about a foundation between her and Gil when he's talking about getting her gifts. That's the real trash right there. And that's the real tea. You won't kiss him because you're waiting on something serious and you want a foundation to be built and you want a friendship to be built. But you're willing to entertain the, uh, him buying you gifts? Ooh. Well, what happened to the foundation that needed to be built? Foundation can't be built on Chanel, baby. Okay, a foundation can't be built on Cartier. Okay. It can only be built on concrete, honey, and that's cheap. <laughs> Is it cheap? Anyway, y'all get what I'm saying. We really don't, but just keep going. I'm like, how do you expect a gift, a Cartier bracelet, but no kisses? Baby, come on, baby. Ain't no such thing as a sugar daddy without the sugar. Okay, you got to give up. Get into it. Boutte to get Cartier. I'm not saying that Gil needs to buy or do anything for Mirla. All I'm saying is her expectations are way off. Gila, Mirla really thinks she's like a 19-year-old bad bitch. Oh, uh, girl. Gil got Mirla. First of all, Gil took Mirla on a um, boat slash plane ride that she didn't want to go on. You get seasick. Really? Hmm. You've probably been on a boat. What do you get? Where, when do you get sick in the air? Because you flew over here. What, what's your excuse, Mirla? You just didn't want to do it. And the way she was sitting, too, while they were on the helicopter, she was just sitting there with her. I feel sick. Can we land? I want to see you throw up. I want to say, you know, I want to see you puke. Just, you just do it. Because I'm not believing. It's giving fake. It's giving phony, honey. You are a damn lie. I want to see you throw up in the bag. That's what I, I would have told my husband. Go ahead, puke. Because if I did all this planning, and I know he didn't do much planning, but if I did all this planning and you don't want to go because you're sick, I, I want you to go ahead and get sick. It's okay. We're going to get sick and then look up and enjoy the view in between uh, pukes. Because I'm not doing it. Who is pretty? Child. Ugh. My husband took me on a helicopter ride for my birthday like a couple years ago. It was so fun. Actually, I was kind of mad at him too. On my own birthday, I was mad at him. But then he was like, I got a surprise for you. And I was like, whatever. And then when we got to the helicopter place, I couldn't even be mad, child. I was so excited. <laughs> so I, the fact that Mirla didn't enjoy this and it wasn't like a fear of heights, she blamed it on like sickness is dookie to me. Dookie. I'm sorry. I, I cannot stand her. At all, really. Whew. Anyway. Move on to the last couple. Um, Mirla was looking Gil upside his head when he told her he hadn't been in a relationship for six years. And he said, I consider a serious relationship any is anything over six months. And I've had four of those, two that lasted about a year and a half, one that was eight months, one that was six months. And she was like, so you haven't been in a relationship in six years? And neither have you. Well, when have you been in a relationship, Mirla? And when have you been married in, in, with kids? Oh, none? Oh, really? So we're in the same boat. Right. The fuck? What's wrong with Mirla? You judge people who are in the same boat as you. You are no better than Gil, but for some reason you feel like you're a superior. I have no idea why. Girl, if you don't come down off your high horse, child, you, your horse is dead, Mirla. That's how deep, that's how bad you are in the same boat. You are, you are on your high horse, honey, and your horse collapsed and died from heat exhaustion, honey. Your horse is on the ground, okay, in the desert. It's hot. And you're thirsty. And you're making it seem like Gil is thirsty. Baby, you are the thirsty one. It's a drought out here. 
for you and you only because you are so anyway pretentious i wrote down mirla has a bad personality and that's just the end of it she has a bad personality she is not fun to be around period or watch imagine having mirla as a boss oh my god becky, becky that sounds like her a nightmare butt. she sounds like the type of boss that i would have to coach relentlessly to get her to understand your shit stinks too mirla bad you 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 sit down on the pot and poop like everybody else and you and you don't wipe good either to be honest anyway but. moving on to rachel and jose <laughs> oh lord ah, the last couple um speaking of dookie rachel told jose i'm not a kid don't feed me listen i think jose was just being nice trying to be even though he's weird but yeah i understand that you're not gonna feel a closeness to jose yet rachel because y'all just met and those come those feelings come later and i understand not you know maybe it's awkward to be fed when you don't really know somebody not from your soulmate that's what she said but why i hate it when people complain about stupid shit there jose has some real issues that we're gonna get to yeah later on in the season this is not one of them some real deal breakers. He, he wants to feed you. What's, what's the big deal? Open your mouth down. Like. Open wide. <laughs> baby. When you like somebody though. They can put anything in your mouth. Girl. Child. Honey. My husband. He can say close your eyes. Open your mouth. Girl. Move on. But I like him. So I guess, I, anyway, let me move on. Please, because your granny watching. Rachel blamed this on the fact that she's so independent. Independence and allowing your husband to feed you are not the same thing. At all. You being independent is not you feeding yourself. You being independent is you paying your own bills. You being independent is you saving your own money. We're going to get to it. You being independent is you making your own decisions. Right. And it looks like Jose is willing to allow you to make your own decisions. He just wants to feed you a, a chocolate covered strawberry. What's the problem? I don't. I know it's awkward because he's a he's just kind of odd. That's what it really is. And you probably don't want to say it. He's an oddball. But honey, if he was like if he was Denzel, your mouth would be open, honey. What do I need? A, do I need a uh, Hispanic example? Honey, if he was. Enrique Iglesias, the jaws would be open. What's the problem? Just say you don't like it because he's weird. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's not about independence. Fishing was cute. That boat was rocky as hell. Did y'all see that? And it's funny how Rachel was so independent but couldn't grab a fish independently. Girl, make up your mind, Rachel. I think Rachel is like a lot of y'all. You have an idea in your head of what you think and how you think a relationship is supposed to go and that is the only way that you think it should go in your head and when somebody comes into your life and they're not make, fixing they're not fitting into this mold of how you think a relationship should go you start qu to question everything instead of being like is this something that i should be more open-minded about or is this a deal breaker for me is jose feeding you a deal breaker for you because you lost 30 pounds and you're feeling insecure about your weight so you don't want your husband to feed you? Is that a deal breaker because of your insecurity? Maybe it is. And maybe you need to go to therapy to figure out why exactly it is you don't like the feeding. Right. But Jose is not doing anything, in my opinion, that's out of the ordinary. He's trying to get to know you and feel you out. You know what I mean? And be intimate anyway. in a way without sex. Um. He's actually trying to flirt really poorly, but... Rachel says she didn't want to move into Jose's house because she doesn't want to feel like it is his house. It is his house. <laughs> yeah, he bought it. Um, listen, right now, Jose owns a house and you renting. If you move in with him and y'all married, I'm assuming y'all don't have a prenup, honey. That is y'all's house. Okay? If you move out, you will probably be back in the same boat you was in before you moved in and you won't be no worse. I'm trying to figure out and you don't know how to save money. What's the problem? I'm really trying to figure out what the problem is. What you want, Jose, to put you on a mortgage, but you can't save. So I, I'm just be, I'm just confused. I'm really confused. Everybody can't buy new houses on Married at First Sight. And the last thing is, 
is Rachel says she wants to keep her money separate from Jose's because she doesn't want to feel like she has an allowance. She's like, I don't want to feel like I get an allowance because I'm independent. Well, you need an allowance because you can't save money. <laughs> oh, you need somebody to budget for you. She do need help. She said it. Plain and simple. Listen, I personally think if I'm going to put my own opinion into it, I think y'all need separate accounts and y'all need a joint one. I, I think it's she should keep her separate account and then, you know, he should keep his separate account and they should have a joint one together for bills and stuff like that. She wants to contribute whatever her more power to her. But the only thing is she admittedly had this conversation with Jose because she needs help saving money. Right. And how is he going to help her? I don't know. That's up for them to decide. But you just said, hey, you're really good at saving money and I need help doing that. So what are we going to do? But no, I don't want to join accounts because I'm independent. Well, obviously you suck at being independent because you ain't saved no money. Not nothing. You want to be independently broke? I'm sure Jose's fine with that. Or do you want to uh, do, you know, hear him out and then maybe get a little bit of some of what he got? I don't know, child. <laughs> Anyway, I can't wait to see y'all's comments. Y'all already know what it is, honey. If you still here and, here and you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you waiting on, child. What you waiting on me to, uh, uh. Show a titty or something? I what don't you know. On, what you waiting on me to do? Nothing. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I appreciate y'all so much for supporting my channel. And I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.